Hello, hello students and welcome to part 3 of chapter 15, weight management. So um, we have a technical issue, so I'm going to repeat the last two minutes of the previous video. We were talking about the dietary modification, the basic principles. Uh, we have to set up realistic goals. Goals must be realistic in terms of overall weight loss and rate of loss, averaging half to one pound per week or no more than two pounds per week for clinically severe obese clients. And that's good to know. Remember, one pound, I mean, half to one pound per week. And then negative energy balance. Also, we have to check on that. The most important factor that affects weight loss is the establishment of a negative energy balance with a reduction of about 500 kilocalories per day. Also, nutrient adequacy, cultural appeal, is very important to take into consideration the culture of the patient and energy readjustment to maintain weight. Once clients have achieved the desired weight, they adjust their kilocalorie intake in accordance with maintenance needs. Now, let's talk about energy balance components. The two sides of the energy balance equation are energy intake in the form of food and drink and energy output put in the in the form of metabolic work and physical activity. So there you go. You have the most important components of the energy balance is first of all the energy intake in the form of food and drinks and energy output in the form of metabolic work and physical activity. So manipulation of either or both sides of the equation eight in successful weight reduction. So let's uh, talk about these clinical applications, break, breaking all links, strategies for changing food behavior. So first we, we have to manage behavioral cues, minimize as many cues for the problem behavior as possible. It's all about behavior. Uh, these um, nutritional habits has its origin in the behavior, in the mental state of the individual. Suppress the cues that cannot be entirely eliminated and strengthen the cues for desirable behaviors. Um, we can use here the SMART goals, specific, measurable, uh, attainable, realistic, and timely. Okay, so you can elaborate. This is my goal today. Um, I'm going to eat less uh, carbs, right? So you break it down into the specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. Okay. Um, Number two, manage actual food behavior in response in response to cues. So slow the pace of eating is very, very important. Take one bite at a time. Savor the food, eat slowly and sense the taste, the smell and texture of the food. So it basically enjoy whenever you are eating and do not uh, be discouraged if you binge right it happens to everybody sometimes there are days that we feel like we need to eat extra avoid eating in response to stress eating because of stress may cause guilty and added calories while doing nothing for the stressor um a, a very good practice is to carry like little snacks in your in your bag like nuts little crackers, fruit, right? So whenever you feel like you, you are under stress and you want to eat something, you can have this uh, nuts mixture um, that um, basically some people, they want to eat some sweets, other ones they feel like salty. So these snacks of nuts and raisins, for example, um, is good for both. Decelerate the problem behavior and uh, accelerate the desired behavior. That's important also. Energy input. We are still talking about the um, dietary modification, right? We spoke about the basic principles, the energy balance components, and now we're gonna move into the 
energy input, food behavior. So clinicians should not assign arbitrary serving sizes and number of service without knowledge of the client's actual eating patterns. Yes, that's very important because you need to help the patient to do the transition. It's not by giving orders or forcing the patient to eat certain amount of foods and, um, uh, you know, um, sometimes the patients, they have cultural uh, habits. So it's very important to know the eating patterns. Food diaries are helpful for establishing the client's normal food choices, the amounts typically eating, and the distribution of meals throughout the day. There is people that they love to start, for example, with a cup of coffee the day. Right? I know a patient that um, is trying to transition from coffee to tea, but at 6 or 7 p.m., he, he really requests a cup of coffee. The one that he didn't get in the morning, he's getting it at 6 or 7 p.m., which is, is bad because sometimes the coffee is going to um, affect his sleep pattern, right? So we have to help the patient transition little by little. Probably we can suggest the patient to start with a decaf coffee and then little by little invite him to transition into natural tea, right? But we cannot force the patient from one day to another to change their eating patterns. F emphasize whole foods and minimize processed foods that's another one right um the use of fat sugar salt and fiber should be quantified and modified if necessary to meet the dietary guidelines for americans and here we have in table 15 2 this is a excellent table excellent so I know you're going to be kind of confused at first, at a glance if you uh, see this table, but let's try to break it down so you can understand. So you have the calorie level of pattern. You can see uh, from there, is, there are diets here from 1000 calories per day to 3200 calories per day, right? And after that, below that, you have the food group or subgroup. They are talking about vegetables and protein food subgroups amount are per week. So now let's take as an example, uh, let's see the 2000 calories per day. Okay, so that means that if I follow, if I scroll down following this middle line under the 2000, means that vegetables, um, they are asking you, they are suggesting you to eat two and a half cups per day of vegetables, right? Two and a half cups per day. And then we have the subgroup, vegetable subgroups in weekly amounts. So let's say we have dark green vegetables, one cup per week. So you have to eat two cups per day of vegetables and one cup of dark green vegetables per week, right? And then you have red and orange vegetables cup per week, five and a half five and a half cups or of uh, red and orange vegetables. So basically almost like one cup per day, right? And then, but you can, you see, you can, uh, you can take notes. You can start dividing Monday. I'm going to eat one cup of red and orange vegetables and you start creating your diet. You know, beans, peas and lentils. Uh, the suggestion is one cup per week, one and a half, right? So they want you to eat five cups of starchy vegetables per week. It's like one, one per day. And you keep moving, 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 right? Uh, and then you have here the recommendation for proteins. Uh, you can eat meats, poultry, eggs, uh, 26 ounces per week. So you can divide 26 divided by seven, right? And then you have seafood. The recommendation is eight ounces per week. And then you see the nuts. The oils is 27 grams per day of oil, right? And then uh, limit on calories for other uses. They give you like extra space to get other calories uh, in the amount of 240. So you can divide that per week, per day, right? 
And then here they are explaining on detail when, when in the table they mention vegetables, that green vegetables, they, they describe all fresh, frozen, and canned dark green. I'm telling you, th this chapter is great. It's a great chapter. It's going to save you a lot of money. You don't have to go to a nutritionist. Then you have the red and orange vegetable, the description of the bean, peas, and lentils, starchy vegetables, other vegetables, fruits, grains, whole grains, refined grains, dairy, protein, seafood, nuts, beans, peas, lentils, vegetable fruits, and more and more and more. Okay, so they are, that table over there is a good, um, a good source of information because you can select, you know, you I want a diet of 1500 calories per week, per day, sorry, or I need a diet of 2500 calories per day. And you have the mathematics and the formula over there to achieve that goal. Okay, energy output, exercise behaviors. Increasing energy output through physical activity helps clients to achieve a negative energy balance. For someone who has no planned physical activity, a regular daily exercise schedule that starts with simple walking for approximately a half an hour each day and building up to a breeze pace is a great way to begin, right? Half an hour, probably you're going to achieve um, 2,000, 5,000 steps. So, um, some people, they have a goal of 10,000 steps per day. That's equivalent to approximately on a regular pace is one hour and 10 minutes, right? If you walk faster, probably you can achieve it in 40 minutes. It is ideal to include, uh, to include both aerobic exercise, like swimming, running, biking, and resistant exercises to a successful weight management program, especially for, um, people that are having osteopenia or osteoporosis, they need to do weight management program, right? So dietary guidelines for Americans regarding exercise and weight maintenance or weight loss. We have to choose a healthy, healthy eating pattern at an appropriate calorie level to help achieve and maintain a healthy body weight. So that's why you have the table over there to get a healthy eating pattern and diet. Um, uh, the, the table is providing good advice in terms of nutrient adequacy and reduce the risk of for chronic disease with the inclusion of too many fruits and vegetables you see that you've seen on the table. Increase the amount of physical activity engagement each week and limit the amount of time spent in sedentary situations. Now we have a sound food plan, a careful diet history can be the basis for a sound personal life food plan that involves the principles of energy and nutrient, nutrient balance, distribution balance and portion control, a food guide and a preventive approach. I will add cultural habits must be considered, right? Energy balance because one pound of fat is equal to approximately 35 kilocalories. An energy deficit of 500 kilocalories per day results in a weight loss of about one pound per week and a deficit of 250 kilocalories equals um, half pound weight loss per week. So if you put a deficit, right, of 500 multiplied by seven, that's when you get the 35 kilocalories. So you are losing one pound. If you really put a energy deficit of 500 per day. Determining an individual's current total energy needs, it's the first a step in making a personalized food plan. So determining an individual's current total energy needs is the first step in making a personalized food plan. That's the most important. And that's good to know. One pound, remember, is equal to 3,500 kilocalories. And then two pounds will be 7,000. And three pounds would be um, equal to 10,500 of fat in kilocalories, right? 
Now for further focus, benefits of aerobic exercise in weight management, um, they are good not only for um, reducing weight, but they are good for cardio, right? To achieve optimal body composition, consider the combination of diet management and aerobic exercises. The benefit of aerobic to an overweight person in a weight management program include the following, suppress appetite, reduce total body fat, higher BMR, basal metabolic rate, right? And we know that the basal metabolic rate is the one that um, the, the energy needed when we are in a resting state, right? Increase circulatory and respiratory function, increase energy expenditure and retention of tissue protein and building of lean body mass levels. That's the one that I like the most, especially for people that are above 50 years old. Now, we have kilocalorie adjustment necessary for weight loss to lose 454 grams, which is one pound per week. There needs to be a hundred kilocalorie energy deficit per day. We made the mathematics already. Remember, we have 3,500 kilocalories in one pound. So if you wanna get rid of that one pound, you need to reduce your kilocalorie intake in 500 or you have to exercise the amount that is going to um, diminish or get rid of that 500 kilocalories deficit per day right so this is the mathematics let's switch to nutrient balance basic diet components for nutrient balance are as follow Carbohydrate, approximately 45% to 65% of the total kilocalories, okay? Remember that. So that's the basic diet components. Carbohydrate, 45 to 65 of the total kilocalories with emphasis on complex forms such as whole grains, fruits, and vegetables that are good sources of fiber. Limit simple sugars, okay? That means your bread, the sugar itself, your cookies, your pasta, your rice, okay? So then estimation of adult energy needs. Uh, the most important here is the physical activity coefficient is 1.200 sedentary, little or no exercise. Uh, 1375 uh, is light active, light exercise or sports in one to two, three days per week, right? So let's um, analyze the formula. In men, total energy expenditure is kilocalorie versus per, kilocalories per day. So the weight in kilograms multiplied by 10 plus height in centimeters multiplied by 625 minus the age multiplied by 5 minus 5, physical activity coefficient, okay? So that is going to give you the physical activity coefficient and that's the one that I was uh, mentioning before. Right, based on the result of that formula, you know if you need to 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 practice, let's say 17, 25, 1725 um, activity coefficient, very active, hard exercise or sport, six to seven days per week. Now we spoke about the carbohydrates, right? Forty-five to sixty-five percent, and then we have the protein, approximately ten to 35% of the total kilocalories. So let's say we have 45% carbohydrates, 10 to 35 proteins, and fat is going to be approximately 20 to 35% of the total kilocalorie. That's the basic uh, nutrient, right? That we need to get the, diet, the basic diet component. So the use of a special diet food is not necessary. All foods can fit into a sound weight loss plan with moderation and be put into the context of the overall plan. In other words, a sound food plan for weight loss must contain a balance of macronutrients, and that's good to know, a balance in protein, fat, and carbs. So you know, 
carbs 45 to 65 protein 10 to 35 and fat 20 to 35 now distribution balance and portion control very important spreading food evenly throughout the day with four to five meal or snacks including breakfast and avoiding the practice of skipping meals ensure healthy food behaviors that's why I strongly suggest to many of us who are having multiple activities, who are very busy throughout the day. So it's very important to have snacks in the bags. Fruit, you can have an apple, you can have a pearl, you can have mandarins, you can have your nuts, right? Um, hunger usually peaks every four to five hours. That is the danger zone when the hunger peaks, right? If an individual has certain problem times of the day, planning simple snack for those periods helps to maintain balance. So long periods without refueling can result in low blood glucose level and intense hunger. And that's the danger because you're going to start eating whatever. So that intense hunger is going to be follow, but subsequent, periods of overeating, usually of quick and accessible foods, which is often energy dense or junk foods, balanced meals and healthful snacks require the foresight of planning and preparation. So that's important. You don't want to be in the danger zone and ready to eat anything at any time in any amount. That's the problem. So I have to apologize again because I was doing fast forward. Um, I was scrolling down too fast. There's a case study here um, that is talking about energy balance and weight management plan. And you can do that case study at home um uh, while well, you're following this video food guide the academy of nutrition and dietetics publish a book titled choose your foods food list or weight management with food exchange list that follow the general dietary guidelines for americans in other words the academy nutrition and dietetics they publish a book uh, choose your foods food list for weight management with food exchange list that follows the general dietary guidelines for America. And that's good. We have to buy this book. This basic food exchange system is a good general reference guide for comparative food values and portions, variety in food choices, and basic meal planning. I think that's a book that we need to have at home. A preventive approach, a prevention of excess weight gain is the most effective means of healthy weight management, supporting young parents and children in healthy lifestyle choices before obesity develops can help to prevent many problems later in adulthood. That's the most important, to prevent in early ages, okay? Um, let's stop here, and when we come back, we're gonna talk about food misinformation and fats. Thank you. <music>